if you will. There are rules. What? It's the rules. That's right, guys. We're going to play a little game. I've got a puzzle for you. In honor of Halloween, some great rivalry matchups here in week eight, we are going to play a little game. This game will be outside the normal game. The game is simple and has very few rules. I am going to give out five waiver wire dollars to each team that either texts me, Facebook messages me, the answer to this puzzle. All that I ask is that you do not post your answers in the Yahoo app group chat. Now I'm sure you guys are all at the edge of your seat to wonder, what is this opportunity? What is this puzzle? What is this jigsaw that we need to solve in order to get our five additional waiver wired dollars? Well, this reward for participating, allowing me to do these videos for you and you taking the time to suffer all the way through them is going to be, can you name at least two of the three songs that I play in this video? I always play music underneath me while I talk, and the goal, you just have to identify two of the three songs, and if you are correct, you will receive five waiver wire dollars. And now let's get ready for these week eight matchups. The good stuff, the real content. You know, we've moved past the craziness of my little game to the real games, the actual matchups. Like I said, I'm very excited for these matchups this week. A lot of interpersonal history in a lot of these matchups, especially the first one I'm going to talk about, me, myself, the commissioner of the Purple Roof Fantasy Football League, takes on the one and only Gurley and the Jets. Yes, that's right. I face the missus, Mrs. Carlson, and I will go head to head, and I wish I would have known that prior to helping her with her roster while she was sitting on the couch asking me questions about what should she do as a kicker should she play this guy or that guy maybe i should have taken a minute to look and see who she was playing but no matter i will still win this matchup i will be the victor she will lose i'm gonna do her like eric did to his wife and i'm gonna put up the highest points of the week on my wife if it puts me on the couch so be it because I'll sleep good knowing that I whooped that ass like a kid getting ready to go on timeout. I'm also very excited for these two longtime friends. We've got Matt, the redheaded Snapchatter, versus, versus his high school classmate, the painfully over-analytical Carl Carlson. Carl probably spent more time Thursday while working thinking about his fantasy lineup, whether he was going to start that Baltimore running back, whether he was not going to start that Baltimore running back. Carl's employer probably got short shrifted on that deal, but Carl probably made out all right with that 18 points that he got from that said Baltimore running back. Even though Carl got that 18 points from his running back, Yahoo thinks that Matt's still going to be the victor in this one. I'm really not that sure about that. I think Carl really has a chance to pull this one out and be the winner, but this victory can absolutely be bought. If Matt does a video of himself eating one of if Matt does a video of himself eating one of the Carolina Reaper potato chip like his fantasy boo, Travis Kelsey, and post it to the league chat board, I will absolutely go corrupt politician on that thing and hand him a victory. Because we all win in that situation, and I think Carl would even agree with me. But it wouldn't be one of those quick, as soon as he starts gagging, the video cuts. It has to be long. It has to be him rolling around on the ground suffering after sucking down that potato chip. Matt, think about it. Carl, you know I'm right. Also this week, we've got number nine, Mark Rad versus number six, the Banana Hammocks. This is one of the few matchups that was really impacted by that Thursday night game. Ray went into the week being predicted as the winner, but Mark came out of the other side of that Thursday game with 37 points from his defense, and Yahoo said, whoa, we're giving this one to that guy. Ray's only real hope for victory is if he's packing some big points from Kirk Cousins or Dak Prescott in that speedo of his. But my philosophy is if your defense gets over 30 points, you're probably going to win that week. I think we're going to see Radloff moving up the ranks a little bit, and I think we're going to see Ray moving down a little bit. Speaking of Radloffs, we have number 10, Mike, taking on number 3, Troy. This is another upset in the making. Even though Troy's predicted to lose... After getting 14 points from a wide receiver on Thursday, which is more than initially predicted, 
Yahoo still has him set to lose. This is a mind game. It's a ploy. He's messing with the older Radlov. He's going, oh yeah, buddy, I'm not filling out my lineup. I've got an open roster spot. What do you think I'm going to do? How are you going to match up? It's like the offense going into the hurry up so the defense can't substitute personnel. But these tricks, I don't think are going to work because I don't think Troy realizes the real wasted roster spot is Big Ben. That guy can only score points at home. And guess what? He's playing in Detroit. I've got him for like a buck 50 and a touchdown if he's lucky, which means Mike is going to take down one of the top teams in an upset of number 10 over number three. The next three matchups are all pretty interesting because each one of these is literally a battle for standings. Each one of the teams is playing a person in the standings that is directly above or below them. Up first, we got Mr. Mark Potter, who looks like he's going to put a pounding on Punky. Mark got 17 points from his kicker and his defense, which isn't terrible, but it's not great either. But he's facing Emily on the right week. Emily's got her stud running back Leonard Fournette on a bye. So really, her luck just can't get any better. After coming off back-to-back -back weeks where she got the highest score in the league posted against her, she can't even really defend herself like she would like to in this matchup because her superstar point getter is taking a break, taking the week off. So unfortunately, I think the bad luck keeps coming for Emily. She's going to take her third L in a row. But she can get that all-important moral victory if Mark does not put up the most points scored this week against her. So she's always got that to look forward to. In a battle for the basement, we've got number 13, Josh Martin, against number 14, Paul Russo. Paul's really trying to do everything he can to get out of that number 14 spot. And Josh is trying to do everything he can from going back to it. So this one could be really interesting and, or at least entertaining for the rest of us who don't really have to worry about sliding that far down the standings. Both of these guys got a disappointing eight points from a player on Thursday night, which essentially means they're coming into this matchup dead even. It might as well be 0-0, even though it's 8-8. Eight to eight. Josh always seems to get a big game from Tom Brady, but I just don't think Brady's going to have enough to bail him out this week. I think uh, Paul's going to probably come out with a huge day from Ertz and AJ Green, and he's going to lay one on his former supervisor and try to get out of that 14 spot. Now, this is going to be a very exciting game of the week. It's not based on interpersonal. It's not based on personal history like a lot of the former matchups have been where it's been brother versus brother or something like that or husband versus wife or something like that. This one is a battle straight out for the standings. Number one versus number two. You got number one Levi coming off his first loss against number two Eric Harbacek who is just two weeks removed from posting one of the highest scores in the league this season. Now, when it comes to choosing who to root for in this matchup, it is not good. This thing is like the 2016 presidential campaign. It is definitely an exercise in choosing between the lesser of two evils. It's a situation no one really wants to be forced into. Two terrible decisions. One has to be picked. It's like Sunday morning and being forced to watch either Tony Romo or Joe Buck. You just don't want to be in this situation. But being that I'm faced with having to make a choice, it's obviously going to be Levi to lose. I want Levi to suffer a second loss, come back to the pack. He'll be tied with all the other top teams with two losses, making the league that much more competitive. And depending on the score, Eric could even jump ahead of him. Now, Yahoo isn't on my side on this one. They have Eric predicted to lose, and I don't agree with that. Eric has been getting crazy points out of Ingram since AP headed to Arizona to go kick it in the retirement community. And Levi's amazing running back tandem of Hunt and Bell actually have one of the more difficult defensive matchups that they're, they're going to face this season. So I really think Eric has a good chance to come out with it. My vote goes to Eric to come out as the winner this week. I wanted to try to get this video done fairly early in the day because the Vikings are across the pond taking on a terrible Cleveland defense, but unfortunately we've got to get up at the crack of dawn here in the sunny stateside morning to go ahead and see that. I gotta stream nothing on my Yahoo app on Roku, you know, so I've gotta get up early, get the kids taken care of so I can start ignoring them appropriately so I can watch my football which means daddy's got to get to bed early tonight so he can watch his beloved Minnesota Vikings defense rack up the score against a terrible Cleveland Browns offense. So to you guys, all I got to say is cheerio motherfuckers, and I'm out.